Okay, so here's a couple of quick tips on how to make your model look a little bit more sexy for your clients. So you're creating a VDC, so there's a good chance you've got everything that's required inside of this model uh, to, to build it uh, and to estimate it. However, we actually would like to use our virtual designer construction model uh, to show clients as well. And you'll notice that there's a few things here. For instance, this beam, uh, it should be painted on site. Now, there's several ways to go about it. I'm going to show you the easiest way to start to change your VDC model into an actual model that you can show clients at the same time as used for drafting and estimating. All right, so I don't like the color of this beam. It doesn't match the color scheme of the house. So what I want to do is I actually want to select that color. So if you go down to materials here, and it could be hidden like this. So select your material. Inside of material, you'll notice that you have an edit button. But before you push edit, you actually need to select the material you wish to edit. So for instance, I'm going to click here. I'm going to go edit. And I have a drop down here, which allows us to have a color wheel um, or RGB or you know, several different things. And you can change your colors uh, using these sliders. But probably more uh, appropriate is to actually choose select color match and choose a color inside of the model and you will then select the color. However, if we zoom in here, you'll notice it still has the size on the lumber because plus spec, when you draw, we'll put some sizes on there to make it easier to understand what it is that's actually drawn in there. Uh, so what you can do is simply just click uh, use texture and now I no longer have a texture. So it's sort of uh, made my model or color scheme work together as I would expect. Do the same for exposed rafters and several other things. I'm going to show you a couple of other ways to actually tidy up your model and make it look more presentable to your clients. And the next one would be styles. So style is basically uh, the style that is used and you can present in several different styles all the time. So for instance, if I went to my elevation scene here, you'll notice that I have a colored style. If I change my color off, uh, you will just have a black and white style. And essentially I'm going to go to uh, structure off, which is the style and you can edit these at any time. You can also use hide. So for instance, if I didn't want these uh, columns in the front here, I can hide those. And if I didn't want the pipes in there, I can hide those. Uh, and I just used a keyboard shortcut, which you can set up in preferences, shortcuts. Uh, okay, so let me show you another way to try and get your model to look really sexy really quickly. First thing, let's turn off our axes because we don't want our axes in there. We want to start to show a client this. And we also want it to look a little bit more realistic and here's a really good way to do it. Inside of styles, you have the ability to select style. Uh, and I'm going to edit the style I'm working in now. And then I'm going to go edit. And I'm going to go to uh, my edge settings here. And what I can do is I can actually change the color of my edge settings according to the material that's been used. And you kind of see that because it's the Hampton style house, I'm, I'm losing things a little bit in the white. So I probably want a little bit more background there. Uh, so I could use two things. I could turn my shadows on. And you'll notice it sort of made it hard to, to, to figure out the outline of the roof, but it gave me more definition in the, the style itself. And obviously you can change around the times of day to suit what you're after. But my roof line is starting to get lost there a little bit. So what would I do? Inside of my styles, I would go to my background settings and I would click my sky on. And you can see that now I'm starting to get a bit more outline of my, uh, my model there. However, I actually want my sky to be a little bit darker. So you can choose RGB or color wheel or whatever it is. I'm going to go a dark blue here. And now I have a, a nice sky there, but I have a really distinct line here uh, between the horizon. And there's a really easy way to get rid of that as well. You can essentially go and choose fog. And you can choose the distance that you want the fog to be, or the percentage of fog. Um, so you can mess around with these here. And you'll notice that the computer does slow down a little bit because essentially the graphics card's working just that little bit harder uh, with shadows on, and fog, and everything like that. But it doesn't take too long before you can get to a point where you're starting to get a model that so sort of looks semi-rendered. If you do have lines that are actually there that, that are black and white, it's because they don't have a material associated with them. You can either go in and paint those areas with a material so that you don't have that. And there's a lot of little tidy things up where you could use the hide function on particular lines that you don't want to see. Uh, 
You can obviously also put ground in there and you can choose the colour of your ground. And we won't get too caught up in the colour of our ground, let's just go to black. And we're starting to get something that a customer understands or appreciates more so. I mean it looks a little bit you know, better. Uh, uh, and at the same time you still have everything else inside. One thing important once you've finished messing around with your styles and your materials is to actually go and create a scene. So I'm going to right click up here and I'm going to go add. And you'll notice that it comes up with a, a prompt. Do you want to update a selected style? Do you want to save as a new style? Or do nothing to save changes? I recommend if you're going to do this for a rendered type view, save as a new style, create scene. And very, very quickly I have that. If I wanted to go back to anything else, for instance some of the rest of the model, my other styles are saved with the scene. And that's important to remember. So I'm going to go back to this one here. You can also save, save the location of the sun. You can save the location of the viewport you can save hidden geometry and everything like that and that's for another tutorial anyway guys i hope it helps out cheers